These days, when looking to write a REST API in Python, most people will opt for FastAPI. Now, FastAPI is great. It comes with excellent type safety out of the box thanks to Pydantic, the documentation is fantastically written, and there's a good ecosystem around it. And of course, it lives up to its name. It's fast for Python. But as with any pure Python project, the performance ceiling is pretty low, and it might not be suitable for high throughput applications. Things don't have to be that way though. And in this video, I'm going to introduce you to Robin, the Python web framework that's over three times faster than FastAPI. Robin is an asynchronous Python web framework written from the ground up in Rust for insane performance. It's totally batteries included, shipping with both a CLI tool for project setup and its own web server, so you won't need any additional dependencies like Uvicorn to run your app. Robin, unlike the comic book character of the same name, also has a special rusty superpower that will speed up your apps even further, but we'll talk about that later in the video. And if you'd like to keep up to date on the latest in the Rust Python ecosystem, get subscribed. I love Python, and squeezing insane performance out of any program is just so, so satisfying. Get started by installing Robin on the command line. It's available on both Conda and Pip. I'll install it using UV, the new Python package manager from Astral, the company behind Ruff. Let me know in the comments if you'd like a video on UV. Once it's installed, run robin-create to scaffold your first Robin project. You'll be asked whether you need a Docker file for production deployment, as well as which database library you'd like to use if you're writing a full stack application. I'll choose SQL Alchemy, and we'll use a SQLite database for now, as I'm not planning to deploy my application. We're going to be writing a basic note-taking app using Robin and HTMX. It'll allow you to create, read, update, and delete Markdown notes. We'll also show off Robin's power by implementing a real-time, server-rendered Markdown Previewer. Create your server by creating an instance of the Robin class with the current file name. This will be done for you in app.py if you use a template. Use the app.get decorator with the root path to define your first endpoint. This takes in a request object as its parameter and can return a string. Start your app by running app.start with the port and host. Endpoints can be synchronous or async. Start your server by running the Python file. Run with the dash dash dev flag to enable hot reload. Alternatively, run the server with the Robin CLI. The default SQL Alchemy template comes with a model.py file and a user model already set up for us. I'm going to delete this and replace it with a note model with an ID, title, and the note content. I'm not going to be implementing auth for this example, so there's no user ID. But you can read about authentication middleware in Robin in the documentation. Run Robin dash dash docs to open the docs or go to robin.tech slash doc. Just a heads up though, I didn't find the docs to be amazing. They're very much a work in progress as Robin is a very new library. However, this is a great opportunity for some open source work for anyone who wants it. Now, let's create our homepage template. Robin supports Ginger 2 templating out of the box. We'll create our templates in a templates directory at the root of our app. I won't be going into all the HTML code in this video, but it's all on GitHub, which is linked in the description. If you want to learn how to use HTMX, check out this video next. Now, let's have our root endpoint return the contents of our HTML file. We'll do that by setting up a Ginger template object with a path to our template directory. We can then render our template using using render template and respond by returning that from the function. This will return a Robin response object with correct headers and status codes. Alternatively, we could set the content type header for our entire application using app.setResponse header. We can also return a dictionary instead of the response object, but I appreciate the type safety. Now, running our server, we get our front page. We've got a list of notes on the left and somewhere to write them on the right. Also, since this is a static page and the response will be the same every time, we can pass the const keyword argument to app.get to have Robin pre-compute the response. We currently don't fetch any notes, so let's create an endpoint to do just that. We'll set up a get endpoint for our notes at the slash notes root. This will query our database to retrieve all the notes and return some styled HTML for each note using a note list template. I've also set up the front end to refresh the notes every few seconds, so we don't need to have a button for the user to do that manually. But we don't have any notes. Create a post endpoint using the app.post decorator. If we had a request body, we'd be able to use the request.json to access it. However, we don't need that, so let's create a new note with a default title and return another rendered HTML template to the user. Okay, so we can list and create posts, but what if we want to get the content of a specific post? Create a new get endpoint with app.get, but this time add a path parameter to the path. You can define a path parameter using a colon. You can then access your path parameters using the request.pathparams dictionary. Once again, we'll fetch our post from the database and return a rendered HTML template. I've also set up a patch endpoint for updating our notes. The content is sent via form data, which is not currently supported natively by Robin. However, the data is available via the request.body object and passable using the path QS method from URL lib.pass. This won't work for file inputs though. You'll have to use another library for that. The rest of the endpoint is much the same though. So now I'd like to talk about Robin's big secret. As I alluded to earlier, Robin allows you to do something really special really easily. It allows you to quickly and simply embed Rust code into your Python web apps with very little boilerplate. We're going to use it to write our ultra fast markdown renderer. Get started by installing Rust import from pip. Then run robin dash dash create Rust file markdown renderer. This will create a markdown renderer.rs 
file with some special comments. You can ignore the comments at the bottom of the file for this example. We don't need custom binding code. However, you'll also notice the Rust import PyO3 line at the top of the file. This imports the PyO3 bindings for us, meaning we can use this Rust code in our Python program. We can go back to our Python code and import the say hello function from our Rust module and add it to a slash hello endpoint. Then run the Robin server with the dash dash compile Rust path flag pointing to the current directory. This will compile the Rust. And if we hit that endpoint, we'll see that we get the output in our console. However, this isn't what I promised. I said we'd be doing some ultra fast markdown compilation and we will. For that, we're going to need the markdown crate from Cargo. To include dependencies in your Robin Rust code, add a dependencies toml key using a special comment that starts with slash slash colon like this. We'll add a dependency beneath this and import it into our code. The render markdown function will take in a string, render it to HTML, then return the rendered HTML. Once we've imported this, we can create a new post route from markdown parsing. It will take the markdown content, render it to HTML, then inject that into a template, which is returned to the client to be inserted into the page. And that's that. If we try it out, you'll see the markdown renders pretty much instantaneously. However, one thing to be mindful of is that this is running locally, so there's no network overhead. There are a number of ways you could reduce latency in production, but I won't go into those in this video too much as they require external infrastructure. However, for those interested, I'd recommend taking a look at fly.io and perhaps Terso. I'm also not taking into account any sort of race conditions or other async programming best practices. HTMX makes that really easy though, so be sure to check it out. Personally, I really like certain aspects of Robin. I think it has a long way to go and there are quite a few sharp edges, but I particularly like the Rust extensions. The throughput is also a big win for people who need high performance APIs, but want to keep things in Python and use the Python ecosystem. I particularly like the ability to pre-render certain routes. I can see that coming in handy for serving some static page shells or version endpoints. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. And if you want to take a look at another rusty Python library, you might like this video where I walk you through Polus, the oxidized competitor to pandas.